functional derivatives can be useful also when uh, doing calculations with path integrals. Let's see. In particular, let's define uh, a function f, a functional f. I'm calling it functional because it depends on, uh, let's say, a function x of tau. And a derivative, quote unquote derivative of this functional would be something like this. So the derivative of this, or in particular, at first, let's define a differential. It is something like this. We have to evaluate the difference between x of tau plus a quote unquote small function, era of tau, and then we subtract the functional evaluated at x of tau, right? And this can also be, let's say, discretized, quote unquote discretized, because if you consider n variables, capital N variables, this can also be written like this, f of uh, x1 plus era1, x2 plus era2, dot, 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 and then you go all the way up to xn plus era n. And of course, you have to subtract f evaluated at x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. Now, if all these uh, increments are small, of course, we can use the, the chain rule. So we have uh, the following uh, formula. We have to sum over i, and then we take the partial derivatives of the function f with respect to xi, and we multiply by era i. So we evaluate the function. The, this derivative is to be evaluated at, at uh, this uh, value, x1, x2, xn. Now, this can be generalized to the continuous case. And instead of a sum, we have an integral. So we have an integral. And the integral is performed over a variable. Let's call it sigma. Because we have to calculate the derivative or the partial derivative of f. Actually, in this case, when we consider functional derivatives, instead of using the, the symbol, this symbol here, we use this delta. It's a small change on, of the function with respect to x of sigma, which is this same variable here. And then we multiply by era of sigma. And we integrate over, over this sigma, which is already here. So the, we have to integrate over this. Uh, variable sigma and you can see that in principle it's a similar summation but it is a continuous summation so this is how we can define the functional derivative so this is just a generalization of the discrete uh, formula here so since uh, this is a generalization the usual rules for differentiation of products integration by parts and so on can be derived for uh, for uh, functional derivatives now, this is going to be useful when we consider the path integral and, in particular, expectation values arising from the path integral. So, we can define an expectation of a, of a certain functional, f, and the expectation is uh, computed with respect to the action s. Now, let me be more clear, so you can take this to be a definition if you want. We have an integral over the measure of the path integral, the x of tau. Then we have the functional f of x of tau. And then we have the exponential i, the action, which is also a function of x of tau, divided by h bar. So this is how we can define an expectation. And from here, we can derive some uh, interesting formulas, and in particular, this is, this is going to be a generalization of the Lagrange, the Euler-Lagrange equations in a quantum field theory. So we are in quantum field theory because we have path integrals. And uh, from this, instead of having only one path from one point to, to from initial point to a final point, we have an infinite amount of paths, which we're going to integrate over and this is going to take into account the prob probabilistic nature of uh, quantum mechanics, quantum physics. Now, at this point, let me show you how you can derive some meaningful equations from here. 
Now let's assume that we want to change the measure of this integral from dx of tau to dx of tau plus era of tau, which is the perturbation on uh, the, the function x of tau. So we also have to change this argument here to x of tau plus era of tau, and also the argument here from x of tau plus era of tau. Of course, the integral should give the same result. And an interesting thing to notice is that uh, this differential here, this measure of the path integral, is going to be just uh, the measure on x of tau, because this small perturbation here is not going to change. So we are going to change x of tau, we are not changing this function era of tau. So you have to take this some, as some kind of intuition. And this means that, of course, this integral would be equal to integral over the measure x of tau, f of x of tau plus era of tau. And then the same thing happens in the argument of the exponential. So we have the exponential i s x of tau plus era of tau divided by h bar. Now, if you put these two together, we can say that 0 is equal to integral over the measure x of tau. So dx of tau. And then we have the difference between f of uh, x plus era. Now, let me drop the dependence on tau, but remember that x is a function of tau and era is a function of tau. Then we have e to the i s of x plus era divided by h bar minus f of x e to the i s of x divided by h bar. Like this. At this point, we can use this formula here for. Uh, the functional derivative, because here you can see that we have a difference of uh, this function evaluated at uh, two very neighboring points, where points in this case are really functions. But we can use the usual formulas for derivatives, so because we have to calculate the derivative of this function. So we can rewrite this as integral over the measure of the path integral. And then we have another integral over sigma, and this, is, this comes from the formula for, uh, for these uh, derivatives, for this uh, functional derivative, because this is the continuous version of the, this discrete formula. We can calculate it like this. We have the change in the function f with respect to x of sigma. Thus, the function f times the derivative of the exponential. So we have i over h bar. We have the change in the action with respect to x of sigma. And then we have the exponential itself. But remember that we also have the function era of sigma. If you recall the formula that we wrote in here. So this is what we can write. But at this point, due to the arbitrariness of the function era of sigma, we can set to zero the integral over this measure of this quantity. Because indeed, this equation, the fact that this is, this is equal to zero, should hold for every function era of sigma, because this is arbitrary. So it means that we can write that the expectation with respect to the action s of the change in the function f with respect to the change in x of sigma should be equal to minus i over h bar the expectation of f the change in the action with respect to the change in x of sigma And this should hold for uh, all sigmas. So this is an, in, an infinite amount 
of equations because uh, they hold for each sigma and this is a generalization of the Euler Lagrange equations in the case of quantum field theory. This is also known as the Schrodinger Dyson equation. So let me write it here. Schrodinger Dyson. Now this important result can also be written in discrete form where uh, x of tau is a uh, the broken line connecting the points x1, x2, xn in the limit that n goes to infinity. So basically it means that we can write this as the partial derivative of f with respect to xk and we take the expectation with respect to the action s but in this case we have to discretize the action and I will show you how you can do that. This is equal to minus i over h bar expectation of f partial derivative of the action with respect to xk and we have to take the expectation with respect to s. Now the action for example let's consider a particle we have something like this we have an integral of uh, one half the mass of the particle x dot squared and then we might have a potential so minus v of x we have to integrate over tau so let's assume that x is a function of tau x dot is also a function of tau when we discretize it instead of having an integral we have a summation so we have to sum from uh, 1 to capital n we are summing over k and we have something like this, we have one half the mass of the particle, then how do we discretize x dot squared? So x dot will become x k plus one minus x k divided by a small increment of time delta t and we can replace it with the following. So we can call the, the increment delta t epsilon. So similarly, d tau would be replaced by epsilon. And we have the square of this quantity. So we can write it as xk plus 1 minus xk squared. Then we have epsilon squared, but when we multiply it by epsilon, we just have epsilon in the denominator here. And then we have minus the potential evaluated at xk time, times epsilon. Therefore, if we evaluate this equation for this action, what we get is uh, something like this. We have a partial derivative of f with respect to xk, the expectation with respect to s, this is the same, but we can evaluate this quantity because we can take the, the derivative of the, uh, of the action with respect to xk. In particular, the only terms that are, are going to be differentiated in this part, or in particular just this part here, are two terms. We have uh, xk plus 1 minus xk squared because we have to take the derivative with respect to xk. So since xk appears, this is going to be differentiated, but we also have another term, another contribution, which is given by xk minus xk minus 1 squared, because remember that this is a summation over k, so there are two terms where we have a, a contribution, right? If we assume that we, don't, we do not start at the initial point and the final point, in all the points in the middle, we have two terms that can be differentiated, right? So let me cancel it because I want to write the formula. This formula here becomes, in the case that the action can be written like, like this, and it's uh, quite simple to, to carry out the differentiation here, we have uh, i epsilon over h bar then we have the expectation of f 
then we have the mass m of the particle, then we have xk plus 1 minus 2xk plus xk minus 1 divided by epsilon squared plus derivative of the potential with respect to xk, so this is a function of xk, So we close this bracket and then also this angular bracket, which is the expectation uh, with respect to, to the action. Let me rewrite this properly. Now, this might seem strange and useless, but actually it's not. It is something that will become familiar very soon because now we can choose a value or, or actually a function for f f is a function it's an arbitrary function that we can uh, average we can take the expectation of and at this point we are going to choose f equal to one and let's see what we get so if f is equal to one which is a constant of course this would be zero right so zero equal to this would become one and since uh, the result here is equal to zero, we can simplify this constant. So this is a constant that we, that we can simplify. So we have the expectation of something like this. We have the mass. And how can we rewrite this? Now, if you think about that, if we return to the continuous case, this um, discrete quantity becomes the second derivative of the variable x. So the derivative of x becomes xk plus 1 minus xk over epsilon. And if you discretize the second derivative of x, so x double dot, you have to subtract the change. So we have uh, xk plus 1 minus xk minus xk minus xk minus 1 divided by epsilon and all of this is divided by epsilon so we can divide by epsilon squared basically and if you put these two together this is what you get so this is just some intuition it is not rigorous mathematics because uh, we are uh, hiding some technical details uh, under the rug here but you can understand intuitively that indeed this is the discrete version of uh, the second derivative. Plus, and then of course, we have the derivative of the potential with respect to x. So when uh, xk becomes continuous, we have the variable x. And remember that this is a function of sigma. And similarly, this is also a function of sigma, where instead of using sigma, we can also write x of uh, t or x of tau. So we have just one variable there. And the expectation is taken with respect to this action S. Now, this can be written, of course, as M expectation X double dot sub S equal to minus the derivative of uh, the, the potential with respect to X. And then we take the expectation of that. But this is something that should sound familiar. It uh, pretty much resembles Newton's second law right where instead of the acceleration we have some kind of average with respect to the action and in the classical limit let's say that this is going to be the acceleration because uh, from Euler Lagrange equations we know that uh, so far the path integral if we consider the path integral we have an infinite amount of paths but in the classical limit only, I mean, the, the major contribution is given by those paths that are in the vicinity of the classical paths. Now, this seems uh, the same as classical mechanics, but actually it's not really the same thing because we are still in the quantum realm here. We are taking expectation values. This is known, to be precise, as the Ehrenfest. Theorem.